welcome to Axis Garage. All right, we got the new vehicle, the Jeep Grand Cherokee 2002, previous video. And, you know, what's the first thing your wife wants? She wants you to check it out, make sure the brakes are good and everything else is good. Give it a once over engine, suspension, make sure it's safety. No, no. She wants XM radio and she needs to be able to plug her phone in so she could play music from her phone on the radio. Well, those Jeeps didn't have that. Um, but we got a bunch of stuff from Amazon to make it easier. So, first thing we had to do was mount the XM radio add-on module, right? And in the Jeep, there's not a whole lot of room. You got to mount this, this uh, cradle for the XM radio. So, I got, posh, I got it all partially connected already, but anyway, I go searching around and I found a mount that goes in the CD slot and locks in, holds the radio. And in the Jeep, that's perfect. We don't use the CD, she's not gonna use the CD slot. And the CD slot is at the top of the radio, which puts the XM right above the radio at the dash, which is a perfect spot for it. So, we got this mount here and see it's got this little thingy here, you go into the CD slot with this and then you tighten it down, it opens this jaw up a little bit and it locks it in the CD slot. It's got a ball mount, one of those standardized ball mounts on the back, so I figured okay, ball mount and I got some mounts that came with the XM radio. Of course, the ones that came with the XM radio wasn't a standardized ball mount. So, what I did was I took apart one of the pedestals that came with the XM radio and I screwed that into a plate that came with the XM radio and made it into a ball mount. Just a little, you know, hillbilly engineering kind of thing. And now I got a ball mount bracket. So this was the this was the original right here, was the original bracket that came with the XM cradle that went into the to the vents. So I took the pieces that went into the vents, it had a couple of nibs on it, I shaved them off with a grinder and screwed the ball mount in through it from the other side put it all together and now I got my cradle that's going to go in the CD mount. So that's how we're going to mount the XM radio. Okay, problem solved there. With that um, CD mount, the brand is MPOW and I'll put a link in the description below. It's like 10 bucks, but check this out. Right, it comes with a phone mount. It's actually made for a phone and it's got little feet on the bottom right to hold your phone and it's got this cradle it's got a button on the side look at this Whoop. right not neat right padded back padded sides right you plop your phone in ratchet it in and now it's staying there and when you want to take it out one-handed release boom and you pull you where's my phone I grab my phone I don't have my phone I don't know where my phone is anyway put a phone in lock it in drive around when you're done hit the button Boom, comes right out. Really, really, really nice. Ten bucks. So now I got this, but I have no mount for it because I used a mount for the XM. So I kind of did the same thing um, and took the original XM mount and drilled some holes in it, put the screws in, and now I kind of pirated together the XM cradle to go onto this phone mount. And now, if, if this sticky dicky goes somewhere in the car, I can use this. If not, I'm going to have to figure out another way to mount the phone. But that's for a... I'm not really concerned with the phone today because we're, we're doing the XM. So now, we got the XM mounted. The, the problem is now, how do you get the XM to play in? Well, most of these add-ons, if you have ever used it, they play um, through like an FM modulator. Where you tune it into a channel, it doesn't come in in your area and it plays through that channel and it's usually pretty good if you don't live near a major city it's pretty good now we're you know um we're outside new york city but still close enough where there's a radio station almost every other number and the best way to find a, a station to play for these is if you get three stations in a row or, or three frequencies in a row i should say where there's no station it's just static you pick that middle one so you get less bleed through from the one next to it and the one next to it on the either side because there's nothing there either and it's usually crystal clear and that works in in probably 80 percent of the country problem is if you live near a city you don't have three in a row we're lucky we have one uh frequency where there's nothing but the problem is there's nothing there but there's something you know one number down and there's something one number up so sometimes we get static and bleed through 
and it's pain, it, it just it's a pain in the ass. So the FM modulators don't always work the best. Um, they make a kit that you could wire it in through the antenna, but then your antenna has to match what the kit is. That's a pain in the ass too because in the in between like the late '90s and the and the mid 2000s, they had a couple of different antenna options, and Jeeps had a uh, a funny antenna, so it doesn't always work with that antenna thing. Best way to do it is to line in. You know, if you have a a spot to plug your phone in, which is what my wife wants anyway, 2002 Jeep didn't have that. But what they did have was a um, a back of the uh, radio. In the back of her radio, she's got the the standard Jeep radio with the five disc CD player in it. There was an option on that to get a disc changer remote mounted I guess trunk mounted disc changer and if you have that option and you don't have the disc changer you have the the port in the back of the radio now we're, we're assuming we didn't we didn't take the radio out yet but we're thinking that that's the radio we, we did our research and it seems to be the radio so what they sell is they sell a kit and this is uh, called a car audio interface on Amazon made in China don't call me a racist it's made in China it's got no brand on it but this will plug into that that blank port in the back of the radio and all you do is power it and it gives you boom gives you a 3.5 millimeter plug that will go into your phone um or you can do what we're going to do which is we're going to take this plug we're going to split it and we're going to send one hardwired to the xm tr uh receiver and then we're going to take the other end of it after we split it and we're going to put it on on this thing and let me show you what this thing is all right this is it's got a little mount if you want it or you could drill a hole but this is a uh, a jack right an audio jack so you can plug your phone your mp3 player whatever you want in there so we're gonna split the signal um, so we have this option and then we have the other signal going to the XM and she will have a spot to plug a phone or MP3 player in, and she will get good sound from the XM. All she has to do on the radio is put it to the CD, and it's going to play either the XM or whatever accessory she has on it. Um, now, to power the XM, oh, wait, to, to split it. So to split it, we got a couple of these cables, and all they are are pretty much 3.5 millimeter stereo headphone uh, splitters, and I got a, it looks like a, pa I didn't even realize it was this many, and a pack of three three of them it was dirt cheap um on amazon i'll put links in the description below to all this crap that we bought um what else did we buy here um oh this okay so for the xm if you remember when we were installing it in the trailblazer i couldn't just cut the the uh power accessory plug end off because that also reduced the voltage down from 12 volts to 5 volts so i said okay i gotta put a um, I don't want to use up one of my power ports for the XM radio, so but I still need that plug because that plug reduces it from the 12 to 5. So what I did was I, I just bought a a um, cigarette lighter style extension cord on Amazon. Again, all this stuff was dirt cheap, and this is a nice thick heavy one. Probably didn't need one this heavy, um, but it's got your receptacle and it's got your other end. And all I'm going to do is just cut it, wire it in, so it's got power, and then I could plug the XM into here, tape it up so it won't come out, and leave it somewhere tied up behind the dash, behind the radio, hidden away to power that XM so it's a nice clean look. Um, but all of this stuff, you know, was real cheap on Amazon. I think in total, this was probably the most expensive. I think this was about 25 bucks. In total, I spent less than less than 50 bucks. We got the, the mount for the XM. We got all our power stuff. We got our accessory jacks. We got our splitters. We got everything we need pretty much to put this thing together and in the next video we're gonna get a, a get that Grand Cherokee and we're gonna take the radio out we're gonna take it all apart and we're gonna get this all set up so that I have no complaints from the wife and she's happy and she's got her XM radio and she's got her auxiliary input and we'll be good to go and then I could actually like check the brakes and check the suspension make sure it all is safe and runs good but you know priorities priorities that's it today from Axel's Garage. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, thumbs up. And if you like what we're doing here at Axel's Garage, subscribe to our channel. And as always, thanks for watching.